forth the sound that said, I hate to me that languished for her sake, but she saw my woeful state, straight in her heart and mercy come, chiding that tone that ever sweet was used in giving gentle doom, and taught it thus anew to me. Isabel, my unsoiled name, the steerness of my life, my vouch against you, and my place in estate will so your accusation overweigh that you shall stifle in your own report and smell of calumny. Have begun. And now I give my sensual race the rein. Fit thy consent to my sharp appetite. Lay by all nice tea and prolixious blushes that banish what they sue for. Redeem thy brother by yielding up thy body. That I have set sail to all the winds which would transport me farthest from your sight. Book both my willfulness and errors down, and unjust proof surmise accumulate. Bring me within the level of your frown, but shoot me not in your wakened hate. For my appeal did strive to prove the consistency and virtue of your love. is that his noble grace would have some pity against my wretched woman, that have followed both my fortunes faithfully, of which there's not one I dare avow. And now I should not lie, but will deserve for virtue and true beauty of the soul, for honesty and decent care to right their husband. Let him be noble, and sure those men are happy that shall have him. The last is for my men. They are the poorest, but their poverty could not draw them from me. If heaven had pleased that. any longer life... In the likeness of a sod. Speak but one rhyme, and I am satisfied. Cry, but I, me, pronounce but love and dove. Speak to my gossip Venus one fair word, one nickname. For her pure blind son and heir, young Adam Cupid, he that shot so true when King Capetua loved the beggar maid. Now, my liege, tell me, what blessings have I here alive that I should fear to die? And yet hear this, no life, I prize it not a straw, but for mine honor. Which I would free if I shall be condemned upon surmises, all proof sleeping else but what your jealousies awake, I tell you, tis rigor. And not law I invocate thy ghost to hear the lamentations of poor Anne, wife to thy Edward, thy slaughtered son, killed by the self same hands that made you. You at your sick service had a prince. Nay. You may say my love was craft and love, and call it cunning. Do, and if you will, if heaven be pleased that you must use me ill, why then you must. Will you put out mine eyes, these eyes that never have, nor never will, so much as frown on you? A fellow of the royal bed, which owe moiety to the throne, a great king's daughter, and the mother to a hopeful prince, here standing to prate and talk for life and honor for who pleased to come in here. I appeal to you, my lord, before Polexenes came to your court, how I was in your grace, how merited to be so, if one jot beyond the bound of honor, or an act, or will that way inclining, hardened to be the hearts of all that hear me, cry fie upon my grave. Never touched earthly faces, so should my papers, yellowed with their age, be sworn like old men, less truth than tongue, and your true rights be turned a poet's <laughs> rage, and a stretched meter of an antique song. But were some child of yours alive that time, you should live twice in it, and in my rhyme. Must be with hot irons burn out both mine eyes. And will you? Have you the heart? When your head did but ache, I made my handkerchief about your brow. The best I had, a princess wrought at me. And never did I ask at you again. And with my hand at midnight held your head. And like the watchful minute to the hour, still and anon, cheered up the heavy time. 
Many a poor man's son would have lain still and never uttered a loving word, but you, at your sick service, had a prince. Hark, wretches. I will grind your bones to dust, and with your blood and it I'll make a paste, and of that paste a coffin I will rear and make two pasties of your shameful heads, for worse than Philomel you used. My daughter. So worse than property, I will be revenged. He who shoots at him, I set him there. He who charges on his forward breast, I am the caitiff that hold him to it. And though I kill him not, I am the reason his death were so affected. Better to where I met the raven lion when he roared with sharp constraints of hunger. Better to where all the miseries which nature owns were mine at once. Come thou home, Rissillian. And that shall be the day when near it lights that this same child of honor and renown to this gallant Hotspur, this all praise the knight, and your unthought of Harry chance to me. For every honor sitting on his helm, with they were multitudes, and on my head my shames redoubled. For the time will come that I shall make this northern youth exchange his glorious deeds for my indignities. For she is but a factor, but my factor, good my lord, to engross such glorious deeds on my behalf. And I will call him so to such strict account that he shall render every glory of he the slightest Worship of his time, or I shall tear, or I shall tear the reckoning from this from his heart. This in the name of God I promise. 